Well, to discuss that a bit further, and I join with Mr. Mike Billington, who is at the Asia desk of the Executive Intelligence Review, who's joining us now by Skype from Leesburg. Thanks a lot for joining us. Now, are we closer to a war between the United States and North Korea, or are we just closer to a Korean war? No, I don't think we're particularly close to a Korean war. There could be a spark there, but as I've said many times, and as uh, Lyndon LaRouche has said many times, we are extremely close to a global nuclear war with, uh, between the United States and Russia and China. Um, the problem in Korea is, as the Chinese recognize, is that the U.S. has taken advantage of this uh, provocations on both sides. Uh, and there certainly are North Korean provocations, but there also are numerous U.S. provocations. They've taken advantage of this for a significant military buildup in the region, which the Chinese recognize is a ring around China. It's, of course, been going on since the so-called pivot began, but this is brought new ABM systems, X-band radars, and, and other heavy uh, offensive weaponry into play. Um, it's interesting that Morton Halperin yesterday, a former defense and security official in several administrations, uh, said at a forum in Washington that uh, although the U.S. has officially at least pledged to the Russians that there would not be a uh, first strike nuclear attack against Russia's nuclear capacities, uh, of course, because Russia has a huge nuclear capacity, so the mutual assured destruction works. But thus far, according to Morton Halperin, the U.S. has never uh, made that pledge to the Chinese, that uh, we have not, in fact, informed them that we would not launch a attack against their, their relatively small nuclear capacity. And therefore, the Chinese have very, very good reason to be concerned over this use of North Korea to build up uh, the U.S. military forces there. So then are we then entering an era of a cold war, in a sense, between China and the U.S. in the region? I don't, I don't think it's that cold. Uh, and especially the, the confrontation with, with Russia is actually far more serious uh, because the, uh, the U.S. and the British are insisting that Russia and China back down from their absolute refusal to accept the regime change policy, uh, the regime change policy in the Middle East. Uh, which is now being uh, lit going on from Iraq and Libya to Syria and very likely to Iran in the near term. Uh, as far as Korea itself goes, this would be an excellent time to open talks with North Korea. The North uh, is open to talks. What they want is a better relationship with the United States to do away with the armistice which ended the Korean War with no peace, no, uh, no official peace treaty, but want a peace treaty. Uh, but it has to be on equal terms, and therefore they make these kind of belligerent statements, and they've developed their nuclear weapons, very small scale and incapable of attacking the United States, despite their statements. And everybody knows that they're incapable of launching such an attack, and it would be insane and suicidal. But they do want talks, and they will not talk on the current proposal from the U.S. and the British, which says we'll only talk if you agree to give up your weapons first. They see what happened to Libya. They see what happened to Iraq. They're not going to do it. But it is an excellent time. And many in South Korea, by the way, agree, including potentially uh, the new President Park, Gun He, who wants to have a basis of trust between North and South Korea. Uh, the danger here I is that the motivation... I apologize for cutting you off, Mr. Billington, sure. but it seems that we have unfortunately run out of time. But of okay. course, we do appreciate your insight as always. That was Mike Billington speaking to us live from Leesburg.